Hello, this is Christy Strickler for GetItScrap.com. Let's talk about three ways to scrapbook your portraits. Personally for me, portraits can sometimes be a challenge. I have to sit down and find a way to draw out a deeper story. Now the photos you're going to see today are scrapbook layouts that originally appeared in a Get It Scrapped article and they're going to help us do just that. They're going to give us ideas for drawing out stories that are not necessarily immediately obvious to the pictures that you're seeing. You're going to be looking at the things the people in the photo are doing, how they're doing them. You're going to be thinking about things people have said or how they said it. You're going to look at stuff that they're wearing, items that they're holding, anything that can contribute to the story, showing a little bit about their personality, things that aren't obvious. And we're going to use three main approaches to scrapbooking those portraits. Let's get started with the examples from the Get It Scrap Creative team. Our first scrapbook layout is from Melanie Grimes. She's made a page called Now You Are Six, capturing the details about her daughter on her birthday. How her daughter likes to party, the jewelry, the hair bands, what she likes to eat, how her friendships are, and even that her teachers adore her. It's a mugshot portrait, kind of typical. You could even use a school portrait. This type of portrait photo is great for using details about your subject right now. Anything you can think of, the facts, the figures, age, date, interests, preferences, they all add up to one vivid in the moment portrait. Use your color, styling, and motifs that support those things that the person in your portrait loves favorite colors, um, if they have a favorite animal, you can use those motifs in the page. Another trick that I like to do with portraits is one that she has done here, is to convert your portrait to black and white. Sometimes the color just kind of draws your eye away from what you're trying to focus on on the scrapbook page within the story. The black and white photo is very dramatic and it can go with just about any motif or color scheme. Our next layout is by Emily Pitts and it's another one of these mugshot style photographs and in this one she has used a photo of her son with his chin up looking off as if into the future to create a portrait of him at 13 on his way to becoming a man. Now these type of layouts are something that I have started doing every year with my son because his interests are changing, his friends for the most part remain the same, but sometimes there's some new ones and I want to capture those changes for him year to year and it's something that you can do with your child no matter what age they are. Our next two scrapbook layouts are going to help us demonstrate action becoming character. And what we mean by that is to look at the subjects in the photos, what they're doing or choices they've made as a starting place to tell a story. You can take photos from outings, events, everyday situations and ask yourself what your subjects are doing and can you connect this obvious action to something that it says about their character or personality. It might say something about their attitude, how they approach life, or their general way of being. This first layout is from Betsy Samarco. One reason is a layout that includes duplicates of the same photo. A photo of Betsy's husband with their dog and she has used this photo of him and the way he is here as an opportunity to talk about how he had a dog when she met him and the way he took care of that dog was one of the reasons that she began to love him. So what I love about this layout is that it not only gives a peek into his personality, it shows a little bit about hers and it helps her to tell a story that she may not have had a photo for. So multiple opportunities that can be had by using action or character to define how you're going to scrapbook a portrait. Our next scrapbook layout is from Debbie Hodge. It features photos of her husband and his bike riding habit. She says that he's very disciplined and so in love with his riding that he sets a mileage goal every year and loves for the good weather to stretch late into the fall. 
She made an effort to be out waiting for him on a November evening when he came home so that she could get these specific shots that show his persistence. Now there's several things that I love about this page. She talked about him being very disciplined and she's used this block design and it sort of reinforces that persistent disciplined habit. Everything's nice and structured. She's also drawn more out of the story. Yes, it's fall bike riding and you can see some fall themed elements there as well. But she's brought out a lot of his personality and characteristics into the page through the journaling. The final way that we can document portraits of people is to curate artifacts. Look for items in your photos like clothes, toys, tools, trinkets. Think about what those things reveal about your subjects that may not be obvious from the photo alone. You might have studied art history and in an allegorical painting you'll find artifacts that open as a function, a metaphor, or a symbol for something more. Perhaps even a preoccupation with something, a style, or a need. You can pull this sort of idea into your scrapbook pages. Look for ways of pulling additional motifs, colors, or textures from that curated artifact collection that you find in those photos. Sometimes those photos may occur over a span of time, so you can look for that there as well. Our first layout is by Debbie Hodge, and she said that she recently pulled up an old photo of her sons and noticed that Isaac had a stuffed animal in his arms and Joshua had something that looked like a squirt gun. She asked them what it was, and even though it was a photo six years later, he immediately knew that it was a cap gun. In the smaller photo, he's holding a terracotta warrior in his hands, and he has always done this, posed for photos with treasured presents, as if those treasures would equate to his interest. They're an important to the portrait of him. Isaac was a cuddly kid who loved soft and cute things from his early days. So she's creating a story that gives a comparison of her sons. And at the same time, she's painting a picture of their personality in the photos. Our final scrapbook layout is from Betsy Samarco. When she saw her son's prayer card so full of tick marks, she knew what he was praying for and what it meant. She used the actual prayer card with photos of her son to tell a powerful story of him, his faith, and his love for her. What I love about this layout is that she's used a piece of memorabilia as an artifact to support the story. Now you're noticing something here that we saw earlier on, and that's a repetition of the same photo. That can be a very powerful way to use a portrait. Sometimes I do this on my scrapbook layouts. If I've misprinted a picture, I'll layer it in as a supporting photo with the better quality picture. Occasionally when you print at home, that happens. So here she has a few motifs that support the story as well, just as Debbie did before. Debbie had a few little animals and some of the colors supported some of the items in her photos. Here, Bessie's using a traditional pattern on the background and some traditional type of vintage ephemera to sort of support the story of his faith and that it grows along with that prayer card. We've seen several examples of how you can document your portraits. And just to review, there are three ways to do that through the traditional mugshot, through action photos that show the person's characteristic, or through a curation of artifacts. Go through your pictures with a different eye for how you can tell the story. Ask yourself if you can group a series of those photos together to create one portrait or picture of that person's characteristics and personality. Ask yourself if converting the photo to black and white will make a more dramatic look and help you focus in on the story you want to tell. And look for motifs and colors and textures in your scrapbook supplies that will help support those stories you want to tell in your portraits. 
This article, as I mentioned before, was originally part of the Get It Scrapped blog, and we will link up to that article for you in the notes for this video. For more inspiration, visit getitscrapped.com blog.